Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video, we're going to be continuing part two of in my Ellie's Oddity series of the mushroom with an eye. And I went ahead and did this for Inktober and I did it digitally in the app Infinite Painter, <clears throat> but it, you can follow along um, with traditional watercolors and check out part one in this series where I show you some of the watercolors and the tools that you can use. So here I wanted to go ahead and add some grass at the bottom of the mushroom and I'm just making sort of little clumps of grass and uh, you can do this traditionally with kind of a dry brush technique where you don't put a lot of water with your watercolor and you uh, bring it up in a sort of a, a stroke from the bottom to the top and that gives it kind of a, a sort of a jagged look that kind of mimics real grass and so I'm trying to do that get that look here in Infinite Painter using some of the watercolor brushes and I'm using some of the blending brushes and uh, here I wanted to go ahead and uh, sort of erase out uh, I'm uh, the uh, outline that I did with the pencil and you can do this traditionally too you can kind of erase out on your paper but you want to be real careful that you don't smudge your paper and make marks so you want to do all of that very lightly and so here I put things on different layers so it makes it easier to do this in infinite painter and when you're doing digital painting and so I wanted to work a little bit more on the top and I'm um, adding the ink now that I've got the background of the watercolors and when I'm doing watercolor and ink I save the details for um, the ink so here I'm using kind of a brown colored ink and <clears throat> like I said in part one you can use uh, dip pens or you can use just your regular uh, fine liners or um, any kind of pen that you like um, you want to probably if you're going to add it last it won't matter so much if the ink is waterproof although you do want it light fast if you're going to to sell your painting um, if you're just doing it in the journal it doesn't matter but here I just went ahead and used uh, a sort of a <clears throat> manga I think I used the manga inker in uh, infinite painter that's one of my favorite uh, brushes in infinite painter and then here I'm using some of the tools just to help the eyeball be round and you can use a bottle cap or a compass if you're doing this traditionally and then just very carefully trace over it with your ink pen and so I'm just working on that trying to get the shape right and um, here I'm zooming in to see what I've got going on here with it and um, there's several different kinds of ink pens in uh, Infinite Painter too that really mimic the traditional uh, pen and ink and so I was using some of them and, and especially the fine line ones and here I'm just kind of working on the eyeball trying to get it round and trying to get the the paint um, more within the the circle there and I was working on the pupil of the eye then I added some fine lines there for the eyeball to sort of uh, mimic the iris and the eyeball and then you want to go ahead and add the, the highlight there and you can use either gouache for that or a really thick white watercolor paint and also that for the spots that are on the mushroom and um, 
Like I said, there are some white paint tubed uh, watercolor paints that are thick enough to do this, but gouache is the best one probably because it it's really thick. So if you can use watercolor gouache, um, this would probably be the best for adding these white spots on the mushroom and the highlight on the eye. And then here I wanted to go ahead and draw on the white spots, just um, draw around them with the brown ink um, to, to give it more detail here and more dimension. And I'm just kind of working on it, working on the shadowing uh, with lines underneath the eyes. And that's why I wanted to get a photo reference from Pixabay because I wanted to see how to handle the shadows with the pen and ink. Um, I'm still sort of a work in progress on pen and ink. And so I like to see how they use their lines to do the shadowing. You can do straight lines, you can do cross hatching. Here I'm kind of doing a little bit of some cross hatching and just trying to get uh, the look of an eyelid kind of on the, the mushroom. And I wanted to add a little bit more of the straight lines on the top there of the, the mushroom cap to just make it look like it's a, an eyelid. And then I'm adding some texture lines on the top and make these uh, follow the shape of the mushroom. That, that just gives you more um, three dimension and more depth if you'll um, add the texture lines on top of the the mushroom and so that's what I'm trying to do there just add um, the the shape of it and so then I step back look see how it looks and then uh, go ahead and and do the rest of it and I wanted to do the stem and make um, the little uh, jagged frilly things that are on the stem I'm not sure the technical term but that's what I wanted to do and, and suggest those and just try to get kind of the, some shadow look to it. And I'm making, again, some curved lines on the stem, some curved vertical lines to sort of give it the, the three-dimensional depth there and give it a little bit of some texture. And then I wanted to do the texture for the grass and you can use a dark green ink color for that. Or if you want to, you can just use your, your brown. It just depends on what overall color that uh, you want for your pen and ink drawing. If you're, if you're following along traditionally or even digitally, it, whatever color that you want. And so I was just adding dark green for the grass. And I'm making little short uh, curved lines trying to get the look of real grass growing up uh, next to the mushroom. And I'm putting it over the clumps of green that I have for the grass there. And that just gives it more of a three-dimensional look. And also you want to get more detail to the grass right in the foreground and in the corners of your picture and just kind of make tiny little marks in the background to to just give it a indication of some depth there and an indication of of the grass in the back and that just makes it look more depthful and then here i went ahead and signed it and um, as you know i usually work on it even after i've signed it so i was just adding a few more things to the eyeball and adding a little bit more shading to the eyelid and underneath the eyeball just trying to get it a little bit more uh, depth to the painting and just kind of get a a little bit of some more texture in there right under the eyeball and uh, I just wanted to try to add a little bit of some color on the stem and add a little bit more of some detail and just try to kind of put the, uh, put on the finishing touches. I don't want to do a whole lot more here because I'm getting it 
it looked pretty good so I decided that I would just leave it alone so this is the end of part two and of Ellie's oddities and for the mushroom but I am going to be doing more in this series of Ellie's oddities so if you want to see what else I'm doing in this series hit the subscribe button and thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you later.